All right, welcome back, Chris McGee, Coach Dave Miller, Loyola. Marymount University, LMU coach. Uh, they just drove right down the street to see us. One of our favorite guys right there, the legend Max Good, the one best. of the best guards in the nation, Anthony Ireland. Uh, thanks for being here. And, and, Coach, let's just start right off the bat uh, about this young man right here, named the Koozie List. Uh, I know you guys have a great relationship. And, uh, you know, what's it been like coaching him? You do know we got a great relationship. Yeah, well, at least I don't we're know if you've it. talked to yeah. him. But, uh, <laughs> No, uh, I saw Anthony play when he came out of, uh, he came to a tournament. It was on our campus at LMU. I saw him come down and make one inside out move and then made a crossover dribble, got about 18 feet of separation and shot a hang jumper. I saw him make one move and I called our guys. I said, we need to get this guy, you know, because we were in the market for a point guard. And, uh, you know, obviously he's, uh, he was a little bit unknown coming out of prep school, although when you get a kid out of New England Prep School League that makes all-conference first team there, you're getting a college player for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew he'd be good, but he's, he's gotten better and better and better and better. And, and the thing I like the most about him, he's, he's hungry and humble. You know, he's not one of these guys running around beating his chest when he hits a shot or he's not throwing up three fingers. You know, he works every single day. We have to keep him out of the gym. We think now he's probably spending a little too much time in the gym. And, and, wow. uh, and you, you know, it can be counterproductive. You know, it can be counterproductive. Yeah, Max, you and I, we've known each other since 1986, and you said hunger. I immediately think of competitiveness. And you have coached at almost every level other than the NBA, and you've coached some really competitive guys. I came to a practice last year, and I watched him in a shooting drill, and I thought he was more competitive than anyone that I had seen other than the Black Mamba and Chris Paul. Right. Where does he rank all-time competitiveness players in your mind? In a quiet way, in the top five, and like you said, Dave, I've been had the good fortune of you know, I've had 12 players play at the NBA level, and, and I was lucky enough to be around those guys. And, and uh, this guy is really competitive. He does it. He leads by example. He's not a vocal person. He needs to get a little more vocal. And I was really pleased yesterday because he got a couple gone a couple of our players yesterday, which he needs to do. But I, you know, I don't think he'll be working a nine to five job anytime soon. Well, he's very vocal on Twitter. You should let the guys have their phones well. in practice, and he can tweet them because he's an active Twitter. Well, he might be. I don't know. I stay away from all that stuff. And we talk to our guys at least once every couple of weeks about being very careful about what you say on that stuff. And, and Well, he's uh, good. He's saying get back, get turned, and stop the damn ball. Well, yeah, then, then, then I'll go along with it. But, uh, you know, they need to be very careful about yeah, that stuff. All joking aside, they, they absolutely do. Yeah. Let's talk basketball. Last year, you finished the season with three straight big wins in the WCC tournament. How has this team built on that? Well, I think we've parlayed it into a great off-season work ethic and, and a great, uh, we've had great summer. Uh, if we stay injury-free, I think we can be, I think we can be really, really be pretty darn competitive this year. We've lost 137 games to our starters the last three years, and I don't think anybody else in the country has incurred that kind of situation. But nevertheless, you know, that's, that's an excuse. And I hate excuses. You've got to find a way regardless. And, uh, you know, I think going into this season with the attitude and with the, the uh, Drew Rossi, our strength and, and coach, has done a great job with our guys. I think, I think if we stay injury-free this year, we can be really competitive. Anthony, what does it say about your team last year and, and, and building for this year that it was a frustrating year, but yet you ended so well and put yourselves in position to to make some some real noise yeah i mean you know we just we just stuck stuck to it and uh you know we didn't we didn't change anything you know those last couple of games we were winning you know we just stuck to it stuck as a family and you know we build up we're going to build off motivation from that we're going to use that as motivation and it's going to carry over into this season what's the personality of, of this year's team just being hungry being really hungry being ready to get out on the floor everybody's bought in you know we're all together we're all one family and we just want to be out there having fun, you know, with our family, with our teammates. What's it like? Oh, sorry, Coach. Sorry. What's it like playing for Coach? I mean, he loves you, but he's going to get on you. He's going to show you how to do it the right way. I mean, a real father figure for, for a lot oh, of Oh, yeah, guys. definitely a father figure for me. And, you know, he, get, he gets on me, you know, still to this day, you know, and I, and I need it, you know, and just to, just to keep, me, keep me in check. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, over four years, you know, five years, I've been knowing him. We built, built a great relationship with him. You know, I definitely look at him as a father figure. In the WCC tournament, you were without doubt a man with a mission. You put this team on <clears throat> your back and willed those wins. 
What did you do in the off season to come back and even better Anthony Ireland? You know, just trying to build better relationships with my teammates. You know, I feel like if we have, you know, great chemistry off the court, you know, to carry on to the court. You know, I feel like, you know, my first couple of years, that's what I think, you know, we lacked a little bit was the off, off, you know, off the court team chemistry. And, you know, I feel like, you know, that's the biggest thing I try to do, you know, bring everybody together, get everybody, all the freshmen, you know, everybody on the same page. You know, just going out there and playing fun, like I said. Yeah, if I, I've had the luxury of coaching a great point guard, Chris Paul, in New Orleans and understand the NBA pretty well. When I watch your game, I think of maybe a DJ Augustine or a Jameer Nelson. Is there an NBA guard that you try and pattern your game after? Um, you know, definitely. I, you know, I've watched, you know, guards, you know, my whole life. But, you know, right now, I definitely say Chris Paul just because, you know, he's probably, they list him as probably, you know, 6'1". He's probably my height. And, um, you know, just seeing his demeanor, seeing the way he carries his team, seeing the way he carries himself, and just him being on the court and off the court, he's just, you know, a well-polished person. Let me ask you this. Uh, you mentioned the team goals, and Coach and I have talked about this, and we've talked to your coach about it. I mean, you're all about winning, and you're all, you're all about the team. And Coach says you, you play the right way. What about a personal goal for you? I mean, you're named to the koozie list and, and, and basketball beyond college. I mean, is there a personal goal that you want to, want to attain this year? Um, you know, definitely, you know, I'm – you know, I'm trying to get that player of the year. You know, I've been trying to get it my whole four years. And, you know, I feel like, you know, if we, you know, do the right things we're supposed to do, if we win, you know, I want to get my coach another coach of the year. You know, and it'll be a second time getting it within my four years. So I, I feel like if I get player of the year, he gets coach of the year, you know, I feel like whatever happens on the court will handle itself. That's really cool. Did you take a lot of pride in that when coach got it? Well, co oh, yeah, yeah, coach of the year, yeah, definitely. You know, I, you know, I was proud of him. You know, I was, you know, teasing him about it a little bit. You know, he didn't like it, <laughs> but it was all funny games. The coach doesn't care about those accolades. No. He win games, right, no, Coach? No, I, 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 seriously, I, <laughs> I, I could care less about that. Other than if you get coach of the year, obviously your players have played well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've never seen anybody. And people will ask me sometimes, who's the best coach in the country? Well, there's no way to gauge that. It might be the guy at in some nondescript league that's finishing fourth with the eighth best talent in the league. So, the, you know, there's well-known coaches that if they've passed the test of time, obviously they're doing a lot of the right things over a long period of time. But uh, I, I'm much more interested in our team being highly, highly successful. I would love for people to say he's the worst coach in America, but his team keeps winning the league. <laughs> no question. Max, you mentioned players so playing well. You have a bunch of newcomers. <clears throat> Who right now has caught your eye in practice and is playing well that you think will impact this team early? Well, actually, we've got three freshmen that will make a strong run at starting for us this year. They're that talented and they're, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're prep school players. So they're kind of like getting a college sophomore with four years of eligibility. Evan Payne suffered a torn meniscus, but he's coming back very quickly. And uh, Nino Jackson's a highly uh, rated player out of uh, Oklahoma. And uh, then Gabe Levin, a prep school player from New England, St. Thomas More. And the New England Prep School League is probably the best sub-college league in the country. And uh, all three of those guys will make a strong contribution this year. I don't know if they're going to start or not, but I'll assure you they're going to play important minutes for us. You know, Coach had a great stat. We were talking to Mark Few uh, a little while ago about, you know, this conference, and, and it's such a family and, and really the only conference where every head coach returns. How, how proud are you of the fact that this conference has grown so much and really it is deep? Well, I think, first of all, Jamie Simvinovich has done an unbelievable job as the commissioner. Not talking about who was here before, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've just been here while Jamie's been here and uh, he's done a magnificent job as evidenced by the media day to day. But the thing I'm most proud of is they said that we were ranked third in the country in APR mm -hmm. or, or graduation rates. Yeah. And, and I said, well, I'll bet the only two are the Ivy League and the Patriot League. And they've been one, two for years and years and years. Because when you look at teams that make the, you know, in, in the NCAA every year, it's, it's horrific some of the graduation rates of some of those schools. Because what basically has happened, a lot of Division I players get thrown to the side when their eligibility is up and defend for themselves with no marketable skills. You know, I think it's our league across the league. We've had 17 seniors, all 17 of whom have graduated. Yeah. And all four of our seniors this year are going to graduate. So that'll make it 21 out of 21. So we're trying to teach, you know, some life skills and, 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 and so they'll be able to take care of themselves and not only, and hopefully even others. 
that they won't drain from society but make a strong contribution to society. Anthony, and I think that's league-wide. Uh, I don't think no, it's just LMU. No I question. think it's every, every team no in the league is that way. No question. Anthony, you're from Waterbury, Connecticut. Hmm. I used to drive by that big cross up there yeah. on, on, the, on the hill yep. on my way to Springfield College. So now that you've been out here going on four years? Four years. Have you decided that the West Side is the best side? It, I mean, yeah, it is. You know, <laughs> my, my plan is, you know, get my whole family out here because, you know, obviously. Well, with want... that said, can I get a yay yay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me one. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh no, no, I do. Yay yay. Yay yay. No chance of getting coached on Twitter, right? Let's not. No, even, uh, no, okay. it's not happening. I want to ask you that. I've known him for so long, but I've. Did you God, drive over be here together? We drove over here. What kind of music does Max What's Good playing? listen to? Oh, no, he's not listening to anything. I mean, Rich he, Homie Kwan. No, he has a lot. Of, yeah. He has a few songs that he'll come and surprise us in the weight room and tell us, you know, whisper in our ear what the song is. And we're like, what? How do you no, know No, what happens is they'll, play, they'll be playing rap music in the weight room, and I'll go up to Drew Rossi. I'll say, Drew, who's that? he say, Coach, that's Little Wayne. So I said, sing it, Little Wayne. And they all kind of yell, but damn, Coach is cool. Coach knows that I don't have a clue who these oh. guys are. Oh, hey. <laughs> Max, Anthony, listen, we, we, we love having you guys. You're right down the street. Come visit us again, all right, during the season. We'll be doing our show every, every week, and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Thank, Thank you, you very so much for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Oh, Thank you. Uh, I knew I'd get you with one.